Hey guys, welcome to CRV Live. This is our third week, um, and I guess you figured it out by now. We bring you weekly sessions every Tuesday to bring you the Costa Rica headlines. I chat with a guest this week, Molly Stevens. Hey Molly, how's it going? Not bad. Molly Stevens is joining us. She is a senior travel consultant at Costa Rican Vacations. I'm your guest presenter, Adam Baker, and uh, I am going to go ahead and uh, start the show as ever by giving you some top Costa Rica headlines. And these are headlines that have come in as of yesterday. So as of May, uh, May the 25th, I believe, yesterday, um, it's good to keep you up to date with where we are with COVID-19, with the coronavirus and so forth. Again, Costa Rica continues to keep it down to a minimum, which is, uh, which is great news. Um, next Sunday, I believe is June the 1st, the new uh, restrictions are, are lifted. More businesses open. All hotels across the, the country open with 50% reduction. Um, and the current stats, most importantly, as of May the 25th, in Costa Rica, we have 951 um, known cases with 628 recoveries, which is really great. You know, it keeps getting higher every week, meaning we have currently 313 active cases in Costa Rica um, and with only 10 people having passed away. Uh, no new updates on the border as yet. It remains the same as it did last week, June the 15th. Is, uh, is the date when we're currently expecting the border to open, but it may change, of course, and we're still waiting to hear from the government uh, whether that's going to change. Um, and interestingly enough, this week, the president here, Carlos Alvarado, signed an agreement, a decree, which aims to encourage more international tourism down the line here in Costa Rica by reducing the cost of jet fuel um, for airlines that purchase it here in Costa Rica. So hopefully we'll see if that works. Sweet. But uh, guys, don't forget, as always, please get your questions into us. We've got Pablo uh, behind all our tech support. So if you get them into us, I'll be following along and I'll be checking with you guys on Facebook. Uh, I can see that we're going live right here, which is really exciting. So I can get your messages. I hope you're watching us from all over the place. Here we go. Hey, Brad, good to hear you. Hey, greetings from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Ooh. That's pretty awesome. Hey, uh, how's it going, Brad? Lisa Atkins. Uh, you've got some questions. We'll try and get you there. Jim Proctor, good friend of the businesses. Jim is here in Costa Rica. Jim says hi. Thank, thanks for getting in touch. Oh, turn the phone down. There we go. And, and ask us any questions. As I say, Molly's been with us for years as a senior travel consultant planning vacations. So get your questions to her and we'll pose them uh, shortly. But let's start, Molly, by um, hearing a little bit about you. Um, perhaps you could just introduce yourself. Of course. Everybody. Um, my name is Molly Stevens. I've been living in Costa Rica. I was here on and off for a few years, and I moved back full time just over six years ago. And I've been with the company for six years, actually thanks to Adam Baker. That's right. <laughs> I, uh, yes, yes. I found out about the company um, and started very shortly after. I just made the next hiring group, and I talked to you about it. Um, I am married to a Costa Rican, well, a gringo Costa Rican who lived in both the U.S. and here. Um, I have a one, just over a one-year-old daughter, and I'm six months pregnant. So. Congratulations <laughs> again. Yes, thanks. Are you guys excited about having a family of four soon? Yes. Yeah. I've been begging my husband for a third, so we'll see where that goes. Dan, I hope you're watching. <laughs> you should submit questions. Um, well, Molly, as ever, we like to ask quick interview questions and you know help everybody understand where we are in Costa Rica and what it's been like for you. Um, so as a, as a travel consultant, here uh, many years now in Costa Rica, what's been what's changed for you specifically in the last few months? It's been a little bit different. <laughs> um, I went from helping people plan trips to helping people postpone their trips. Uh -huh. um, so it's been, I mean, it's 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 definitely been stressful and emotional because it's sure. such a big part of you know it's my job, <laughs> and it completely changed basically one day to the next. Um, you know, people are. Generally speaking, people are pretty understanding, especially business owners themselves who've been affected. You know, they, yeah. they understand and they're very compassionate. And it's so great talking to those people because they, you know, they see both sides of things and they want to work together to come up with a solution. And we're being really flexible in, in what we're offering of rescheduling and postponing, not having to set dates because we understand your yeah. immediate future is, is very uncertain. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been very different in terms of my day to day than what it normally is. And it, I'm guessing, obviously, you speak to a lot of people daily. It must be obviously sometimes frustrating, but also mm -hmm. you're trying to be as empathetic 
everybody's in this together. Yeah. So you're trying to understand people's concerns, of course. dealing mm-hmm. with the same situation again and again, which can also be difficult on your end. Yes. I and mean, obviously, we're we're lux- <laughs> we're fortunate. We're in the luxury sector, the mm-hmm. travel industry. Obviously, an industry that's been hit really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, have you found that people have also been relatively compassionate on the other end, understanding? Yes, no, I mean, that, like I say, especially people who own their own businesses and their yeah. businesses have been affected as well. Um, you know, they, they say they say to me, I understand this affects you and, and the company you work for. And, you know, tourism is one of the biggest yeah. industries that's been hit pretty hard. For sure. Um, and they say, you know, we, we want, still want to go on this trip. What can we do? And yeah. then they're good at working together. Um, so that's really nice. I, you know, I tell people I wish I could virtually hug them through the phone because sure, it's sure. nice having a positive conversation yeah. and, and, and whatnot. I mean, we do still have people who are interested in planning, whether it's for later this year or next year. I mean, everybody's at different levels of how they see everything happening right now and what they see the future as. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really interesting talking to so many different dyna- dynamics of that level yeah, because yeah. people are at such different places. For sure. Um, and hearing what's going on in their hometown and whatnot, that you get a greater perspective of how everybody yeah, feels Yeah, I can imagine, way. especially yeah. de- uh, you know, dealing with a lot of people in North America, oh, States, yeah, Canada, mm-hmm. and where everybody's at differently. Mm-hmm. No, that's a really good point. Um, what are the main concerns or questions that you've had to obviously address a lot when people are chatting to you? What mm-hmm. are they asking you? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people sometimes ask me when the Costa Rica borders are going to open. Yeah. And, and what I predict, and it's, it's, I literally said to one person, I said, I, I don't know if the Costa Rican government really knows what they're going to do. Not because they, they're they unorganized or they don't, they just are clueless or anything yeah. like that. They just yeah. don't know what the next, it changes every day. Yeah. They don't know what a month from now is going to look like. So that's why they don't have a set project projection. Um, so that's that's been difficult for me to answer just because nobody really knows. And people yeah. understand that. Sometimes people say, you know, I know you probably don't know, <laughs> but yeah, it's a really good point because questions. because you don't, and at the same time, yeah. you know, they're worried. They've got an investment. Yeah, they don't right. know when they can mm-hmm. travel. They don't know what the airlines mm-hmm. are, are doing. Um, they don't know if and when they can make it down. I'll say yep. their own family. Mm-hmm. So it's like this endless circle of empathy of where people course. are trying to understand each other. Yeah, and yeah. I think they think that also we have some sort of insight as well. No, for but sure. We, we just. No, we're know, in the we're, same issue that's why we're having again these this we we started this live you know weekly session so mm-hmm. we can give you guys feedback. Of it's course. also a way of mm-hmm. chatting live on the ground as to where we are. Yeah. And offering yeah. you know offering transparency for Costa mm-hmm. communication. So uh, trying to be in touch as much as possible. Um are you optimistic generally about the the future of Costa Rica travel and I am the travel I, I really am. I don't think that travel it's gonna die uh, or anything like yeah. that. I just think it's <laughs> for sure. it's too it's too much part of so many people's lives and so important to so many people that and and so important important I just think for you know the global world that we're in, understanding different cultures and all you know just that those different experiences in your life. I mean, I know for me, travel's been huge. Yeah. Um, I think in the immediate future, it's going to change a lot. Um. La- two weekends ago, I had the opportunity to go stay at a hotel in Santa Teresa called Mantipa. Um, beautiful hotel, by the way, yeah. one of my favorites now. And they already are starting to, and that's why they invited me, is to test out their new sanitary procedures. Fantastic. So the, 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 all the staff wearing masks, um, uh-huh. they switched to a digital menu rather than okay. a physical menu so that everybody's not touching that same menu. Sure. You know, just small little things, changes in the maid services and, and pe- based on people's preferences so that you feel comfortable having the maid come in every day, you still can, but yeah. if you want her to come in every three days or at the end uh-huh. of your stay, get towels. That's really interesting, you. especially mm-hmm. so you have like first-hand knowledge and obviously Nantipa is a hotel under 20 rooms, so they mm-hmm. open within the government restrictions at like 25% I believe it was or 50%. Yeah, I don't yeah. know, yeah. So yeah, maybe 10 rooms are open and again... By doing that in Costa Rica, it gives all the hotels a chance to figure out all these new measures. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's, it was really, I mean, it, it made me feel more optimistic that hotels are already thinking about these things yeah, to be sure. prepared. You know, yeah. it's, it's that I, I mean, I can see somebody arriving and just feeling more comfortable based on these things that they're doing, yeah. given the situation. For sure. Um, that's really good so, to hear. And that's uh, obviously using the national tourism sector to mm-hmm. get people going here locally. Of see course. if that actually helps, and then, as you say, test with these measures. Uh, that's super exciting. I'm guessing, in your opinion, is when mm-hmm. most of these hotels will start uh, applying similar. I 
I sort think of so. I think so. And it, it's nice too because you could tell a lot of the staff understandably so was uncomfortable wearing face masks. And, yeah. But yeah. they'll be more used to it by then so that by the time, you know, like outside guests arrive, I mean, not that non locals or myself are not a guest. Sure, but, sure. But sure. by the time there's, you know, regular clientele, yeah, it becomes there, the new normal. It, became, it come, becomes the new normal and, and everybody's comfortable with it and, and yeah. it just makes for a more seamless. Yeah, yeah experience. Mm -hmm. Which is weird because, of course, when you're paying for luxury experiences or just getting away, adventure travel, mm -hmm. uh, you want to be as close to people as normal. You want to. It's an interactive experience, exactly, right, with the locals. Yeah. And I guess for everybody in the travel industry around the world, that's mm -hmm. just going to be, as we say, the new normal for the time being. At all. Yeah, I mean, it's not to say that you can't. In my opinion, you can't still practice. You know, washing your hands and using hand sanitizer, uh -huh. wearing masks, yeah. and social distancing, and still interact with people. Yeah, I mean, you don't know, hug them and, and shake hands. And yeah, immediately that's, that is weird, right? Like them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's trying it's, to get used uh, to it when you're seeing your friends for yeah. the first time as the restrictions get like up slightly. Yeah, yeah. Costa Rica is a very warm, friendly place. Yeah, people yeah. Shaking hands, yeah. hugs everywhere. Exactly. That's, it is weird. Yeah, kiss on the cheek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I had a client recently who said to me like. Oh my gosh, we really need a vacation. Thanks for sending this email. Um, uh, I can't wait to be around people. You know, so yeah. I, think, I think there's also this, you know, people have been in their houses. I, for it's totally true. I, I, before we went live on air, I asked you, you know, the, uh, we were talking about the future of travel, mm -hmm. and you made a really good point. It's a fundamentally human thing it to is. want to explore and it's travel. To be near people. The idea yeah. that it wouldn't happen is just really unfathomable. Yes. I yes, think when it's clear that that's going to change. You know, yeah, whether it's, it's a pandemic, whether it's an economic mm -hmm. crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's, it's always good to be optimistic. It's always good to be truthful to oneself as well. I think that's, you know, that's yeah, definitely, of course. De definitely going to be the case. I mean, it may not go back to the height it was before, but I still think people will travel. I mean, everyone yeah. has different risk. <laughs> Correct, and it will evolve into a way mm -hmm. where people are comfortable to exactly. do so. And like you say, we've seen these changes in the hotels. Other countries are opening their borders. Even Spain from July the 1st is removing the 14-day quarantine period. Yeah. And Spain was one of the hardest hit countries yes. you know, in Europe. So it's good to see, I think, the speed mm -hmm. in which it is moving. Mm -hmm. um, as a US expat uh, here, how do you feel the government have dealt with the pandemic and mm -hmm. the economic fallout following? Like, uh, What's your general opinion? Mm -hmm. I think the government has done a good job. I mean, it's pretty extraordinary that we've had less than 1,000 cases over yeah. almost Almost three months? Nearly three months. Yeah, yeah nearly three, three, months. three months. I mean, that, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, they, they thankfully, <laughs> they had more of a little bit more of a heads up than a lot of other countries. And they acted on it. And they acted very quickly. Yeah. Um, very quickly, and I think surprisingly quickly for some sure. of us, um, at least for myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, And they yeah. were able to trace, you know, Costa Rica, I mean, it's, it's incredible. We, um, we've lived in our, our house for four years now, and somebody moved in next door to us, and we had said hey and whatnot, uh -huh. and... And two days ago, one of my former, Sebastian, oh, yeah. co-workers, yeah, he's yeah. like, hey, Molly. And I'm like, where are you from? It's just everybody knows everyone in Costa Rica yeah. because it acts as like this it's a small, small place. town. Yeah, yeah. So, but that helps with like them being able to track everything. That's a good point. Is, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. yeah because it's, it's a close-knit community. It's exactly. Within yeah. a country. But yeah. I mean, realistically, Costa Rica is the size of West Virginia. Right. So it's, five million, just over five yeah. million people. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. more people than there in West Virginia. But, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, but, country, but the yeah. size, the physical size. Yeah. But but yeah, so it's, it's um, you know, it's much easier to control in such a smaller country. Yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, that has helped the Costa Rican government a lot. And because yeah. I think some people, when I tell them, oh, there have been less than a thousand cases, they're kind of like, hmm, are they lying about this? Yeah, people get skeptical. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and that's and fair enough. Are they testing people? Yeah. It's like, yes, they are. Um, but it's just so much easier to control in this country than a country like the United States. That's yeah, correct. And especially East, West Coast, when we're talking about the, spa mm -hmm. the, the states or, you know, the capitals, mm -hmm. Paris, Madrid, London, where they did have it much harder. These are areas with 8 to 10 to 12 million people in a small, in space. A small confined mm -hmm. space, public transport. Mm -hmm. You know, these kind of things, yeah, the government did get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't see that consistently in San Jose. Mm -hmm. San Jose is just under a million people yep. in its heart as uh -huh. is the capital. Uh, so that's a really good point. So it is easier to control. And again, with the news cards every day, people are being aware. Mm -hmm. And again, it is a really small percentage. I believe it has one of the lowest fatality rates in Central America. Yeah. Really, you know, I mean, and for just over 300 active cases. Yeah. I mean, I... The I chart's know. looking good. The graph's yeah. looking good. They're going in the right direction. Yeah. But at the same time, it's still important to be cautious. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I... I, you know, don't really do anything other than go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and, like, the, the odd haircut or yeah. whatever it may be. 
Um, but I don't feel scared or worried yeah. when I go out. I sure. mean, all the grocery stores, they um, make you put hand sanitizer in before yeah. you walk in. So everybody's hands are at least <laughs> most part sure, clean. Sure, sure, sure. Um, they all have like the shields protecting you yeah, from the people that working around quickly. the cash register. Ooh, so, yeah, all the stores, super fast. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. And what about what about now the the, the next stage? stage. Yeah. What would you like to see from the government moving forward? Obviously, mm-hmm. tourism has been hit hard. Yeah. Our specific area of expertise. Yeah. 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 So you, you know, what do you what do you think? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I I think that I think we, the government needs to be a little bit more progressive with opening things up. Um, like we were talking about the. You know, like things have opened up more so during the week, but on the weekend they're still closed down. Yeah. And, you know, of course, a lot of people have been economically affected by this with their income and their jobs and whatnot, even doctors. Yeah. I was just talking to a friend of a friend, and their husband's a doctor, and he hardly has any work right now because people are not really going, you know, people are not leaving as much, whatever the reasons may be. And even for myself, I've spaced out my my OBGYN appointments just a Uh little bit. Just because financially, and, yeah, yeah, you know, sure. everything is, yeah, yeah, yeah. so sense. it's, um, so everybody's being affected by this, but having places closed on the weekend, like restaurants still aren't open on the yeah. weekend, that's the time when people can get out and spend that money to help everyone, Yeah, that we don't have that opportunity right now. Um, that's so a good I think, point. I think that will be helpful to open things up a little bit faster and they can always scale back. You yeah. Know? It's, but Which I seems think, to be the case. That is the point. You know, we're, we're opening as much as we can within mm-hmm. reason. Um, I agree. I think a lot of people are concerned about the border. You know, it's it would be nice to have a date that's fixed. Yeah. So obviously we know June the 13th is the current mm-hmm. date. I know there's a degree of uncertainty as to whether that will remain the same or whether that's going to open. And obviously for all of our customers, you know, your mm-hmm. clients, yeah. you would love to be able to give you this is assured. Of yeah. course, it's a two-stage mm-hmm. process, right? Yes. The, the airport has to be safe and secure to come mm-hmm. through, open up, and then we get the international flights coming back in. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, let's hope we get some news soon because yes. I know that, mm-hmm. you know, um, and finally, I'd like to ask you, how do you feel the vibe on the ground in Costa Rica is? You just mentioned you don't feel too worried. You're going to get a haircut. Yeah. People are taking precautions. Yeah. It's busy out there, right? Right now. I mean, I don't think it's it's not as busy as it was. Yeah. Um, but I think people are feeling more comfortable getting out, especially with the number of cases going down after being in their houses for over two months. Yeah. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. starting exactly. to want to explore a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and I can't blame them. I'm, I'm in the same place. And but I, you know, you see more people wearing masks, and the health ministry. Yeah. Um, you know, even at the hairdressers, they have to wear like either the shield or the mask. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, you know, they'll get fined if they're not following those procedures. So they're very, you know, they take it very seriously. Sure. Um, so there's already those things in place that if if we kind of start opening up more with those procedures in place, yeah. I mean, it's not going to be the same, but. If the alternative is we just stop doing things until this is there's a vaccine or until this then is nothing's, over, nothing's going to not, n- yeah, nothing, gonna nobody's going to have a job. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So it's I mean not to blame things on economics, yeah. but kind of like we have to keep living. Yeah, you know. So it's well, a positive outlook, especially yeah. when you say that you see the people making good changes. Yeah, I know, and, and people are taking it pretty seriously, yeah. and, and they're understanding. Of but it. I think because they are, especially here, we can mm-hmm. be proud that Costa Rica has still less, as we say, yeah. less than a thousand cases. Yeah. And the death yeah. minimum, and I and I my point as well is even if they're not testing as much as they could be, yeah. if there were still terrible cases, of, they would still uh, pop up. They would still pop up. Yeah, you would mm-hmm. see people going to hospital. Yeah, I believe there's three people as of yesterday in intensive care, really? and only fifteen people in hospital. Yeah, totally. So that's yeah. a really low it's number. Stayed around that number for like this entire yeah. time too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's generally optimistic. I think yes. we can generally be excited, you know. Um, so obviously something that uh, uh, after the questions we mm-hmm. talk about our deal of the day okay. uh, there's a tiny little segment where I let you guys know what Costa Rica Vacations is offering um, and it still goes back I'm not going to bore you this is the last time I tell you about this secret deals um, you've probably been selling these um, a little bit mm-hmm. and I've been hearing uh, that mm-hmm. the rates are incredible and I know this is going to probably stop at the end of the month so this is the mm-hmm. last time I get, I get to tell you by Saturday yes. uh, hotel mm-hmm. rates really slashed this is for future travel, right? But, you know, future the fall, travel, but Christmas through to, next year. It, through to next year. So wow. a lot of them are through to 2021. I mean, yeah. hotels understand that we 
you know, people don't want to travel right now. Yeah. So they're just still promoting to get future travel and, yeah. and whatnot. So it's, it's I heard uh, there was an amazing rate, uh, locals, and I think even secret, you know, I, I can't give you the number, <laughs> but it's a really low three digit figure for one of the best five star resorts uh, at Tamakon. Yeah. I was like, I want to get away as much as <laughs> I want to go. So yeah, check it out. Uh, yeah. No secret deals. You need to get in touch with Molly directly yeah. um, or Costa Rica Vacations, and we'll be able to let you know when you reach out to us what they are if you're interested in them. Uh, okay, so there's another section. Top three. Last week we were chatting to Derek, and obviously, as you know, Derek is our hotel specialist. Mm -hmm. He gave us his top three hotels. I know you like to stay active, get out and about, yes. take your family mm -hmm. for trips. Give me your top three national parks. Right. Costa Rica is famous. The parks are starting to open. Yes. What are your 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 best? My what do you best. recommend? Um, the Tenorio National Park. Tenorio. Rio Celeste. Uh -huh. It's actually one of the first national parks that I went to when I came to Costa Rica. Pablo is a pretty yeah. beautiful park. And the, the, the river, yeah, Rio the Celeste. River. Yeah, I mean, when I went, it was actually really rainy, so the river wasn't even that blue. Yeah. But it's just, I mean, through the jungle, through the forest, you know, That's true. childhood dreams coming true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, so, I mean, when you see a blue river in a rainforest yeah. for the first time, it's yeah, quite it's, special. It's, I mean, just the rain, it was one of my first times seeing you know, yeah. primary rainforest. Yeah. It's so impressive. Beautiful. Um, also, the amount of nature. Remember last time we were shooting? That's true. Yeah. I was saying, yeah, the amount yeah. of nature that you can see within one enclosed. Yeah, we saw, oh, so many. Uh, it was, yeah, it was yeah. Some, some beautiful snakes, birds, butterflies. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, highly yeah. recommended. That's, yeah. that's a really good one. That's good. You see, well, uh, it's hard to see them on the hike, but like tapirs, there's a ton of tapirs. Yeah, I know. Well, when I first read tape, it was like, it's a mix between a cow and an elephant, you know, a thing with half a snout. Super yeah. big, super cute faces. Yeah. yeah. My little cousin was like, is that a hippo? Right, exactly. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Okay, so Tenorio's um, up there. Tenorio, um, Corcovado. Corcovado. I'm sorry, I know it's. No, I mean, I totally agree with so Osa Peninsula. Yeah, just the Osa Peninsula, yeah. period. One of Pablo's um, favorite places as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's close to home, Barva. Yeah. Um, oh, it's so just, which is just yeah, just up the mountain. I mean, that that's more easy for me to access, yeah. and I think it's really great. It's more cloud forest. Yeah, no, but Rio forest. Carrillo National Park, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. so Barva is one of the old oh, yeah, sorry, uh, volcan the, volcanic yeah. craters. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're on this side, so where the airport is, Aredia, San mm -hmm. Jose, within about an hour, you can get to the access. And exactly. that cloud forest hike, mm -hmm. really, really it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and it's it's a shorter trail. It's it's nice. I mean, that's yeah. more. Close to home. That's nice because not everybody talks about that. Obviously, when you come down and visit, you're going to mm -hmm. Antonio, you're going to La Fortuna, you're going to Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you live here, I love being in the mountains. I love yeah. driving, you know, maybe six, seven thousand feet. Mm -hmm. You start to climb, there, the temperature drops, drops and then yeah, you get all the cool. pine trees and mm -hmm. the smells. Mm -hmm. So Tenorio, Corcovado, and Braio Carrillo, mm -hmm. right in the Central Valley. Yeah. Fantastic picks, Molly. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a bunch of questions. You guys have been getting them in, okay. and uh, our editor, uh, Pablo is in the background, has chosen some of the best mm -hmm. ones. So let me see, uh, Molly, what I can ask you. Lisa Atkins, who we said hello to earlier, she's asked, uh, when do you think it would be safe to travel um, there from the USA? Uh, we were supposed to leave this Thursday, oh, no. trying to figure Hi, out Lisa. when to come back. So Lisa yeah. was planning on coming this Thursday. Obviously, that's not mm -hmm. a case with you know airlines and obviously the borders are closed. Mm -hmm. So you know when, if you're in Lisa's position, when yeah. might she rebook, when yeah. might she reschedule? I really think it depends upon people's risk assessment, I guess you could say, and when you feel comfortable traveling, because some people feel comfortable as early as, as a few months from now, the end of this year, or into the beginning of next year. I mean, again, staying at Nantipa and seeing how they're using masks and changing, you know, not huge things, but enough things to make it feel just more comfortable and, and safer in a way, um, but I also understand that you have to go through the airports in order to get to Costa Rica, Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're making changes as well. I mean, I get, you know, monthly updates from the CEO, from American Airlines and whoever with yeah. all the different changes and procedures yeah, yeah. they're making. So I think over the next few months, I mean, all these businesses are, are really eager <laughs> to get more business back and, uh -huh. and make the changes they need to for people to feel more comfortable. Um, so I think it, it depends upon the person. Um, I would say definitely 2021. I mean, January, I think even Christmas of this year yeah. or Thanksgiving. I think that's that's giving it some time without having to worry about the border. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if Lisa also. wanted to travel, it's still this year. So obviously yeah. we're, we're in the, uh, you know, May. So it's the beginning of the green season. You see a couple of showers in the afternoon. It's really lovely mornings. 
November is a lovely time to travel. Mm -hmm. Similar weather to May. It is very, very similar. And it's, you, know, you don't have to wait that much longer to exactly. next year. I'm sure, like you say, yeah. we'll, we'll be well down the line. Exactly. I'm sure, it's difficult to be sure. Maybe, yeah, right? it's changing constantly, but maybe <laughs> yeah. in five or six months. Yeah, I think, I think November is is a really good option, and in, in, in as well as terms of weather, because September and October are rainier months. Yeah, depends on where you are in the country. That's true. But November is going to be most similar to May in terms of weather, and it's it's really nice weather. I mean, yeah. it's just off of rainy season, and everything's really green and, and beautiful. So, if you were Lisa, you could get in touch with your travel provider or consultant. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then yeah. see if you can rebook that for November. And, for November. And frankly, a lot of companies are being flexible too. If you wanted to travel sooner, I mean, uh, we're happy yeah. to do this at Costa Rican Vacations. If if you have had a book trip, you know, for May and you wanted to change it to August, yeah, we can change it to August. If you need to change it again, we'll change yeah. it again. You know, we're, we, we're, we understand. Yeah, we understand. We this know what's happening. Yeah. You know, no we're not. We're not situation. trying to. You know, we're trying to be as yeah. helpful as possible, yeah, especially yeah, for sure. the people. You know who still want to come and, and yeah. you know, support Costa Rica. Great news! No, I, hopefully that helps, Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know. Uh, Brett Steelsmith is asking: Are they planning on dropping the fourteen-day quarantine once they open the borders to foreigners? Mm -hmm. Now I know, obviously, we haven't. Um, well, yeah. Well, do you know? Have you ever an update I, about that? If, if they I do heard, keep June the fifteenth, I heard something when they announced the drop in the fuel price that there was only going to be like a two-day quarantine or okay. like a. Or is there no quarantine because they're planning on doing testing upon it? I have that as well, yeah. So that's, that's, I mean, all, I think, preliminary. It's not set in stone, but I think that's part of the new talk that's coming out. Okay. Um, they, I mean, nothing is certain, but I cannot imagine that they'll have a 14-day quarantine when they open the borders. It's one, just not One possible. would also think so. Yeah. I mean, obviously, a lot of you guys, especially mm -hmm. coming from the U.S., looking for an 8, 9, 10-day vacation, yeah. and you're expected to be in mean, quarantine for two that. weeks. That's Staying in one place for two weeks. Yeah, yeah that kind of defeats yeah. the purpose of going on a vacation. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. So, you know, Brett, it's difficult to know for sure. Exactly. Yeah. But I certainly agree with what Molly is saying, and I think it would make sense that, of course, you're coming on a vacation for one mm -hmm. or two weeks, you want to be able to enjoy the vacation. To travel, yeah. So if it is one or two days, we'll see. Again, this is where it's difficult. You have to keep watching the updates. Yeah. Stick with us. Come back and watch next week. We'll mm -hmm. have more updates. We're going to be into June. So in you know, next week's episode, we might have new headlines. Um, to let you guys know. But uh, yeah, hopefully that helps in a small way. Daniel has been in touch. Um, Daniel Selinski. I said your last name, Daniel Wright. He has a couple of questions. Let me see. The first one is, um, is Niada Springs, Niada Gardens still open? Do you know That's a good question. I think they are open 50% occupancy. I don't know 100%. Yeah. We can find uh, out. We can, we can actually out. let you yes. know in the comments, Daniel, because yes. uh, as I said, from Sunday... Any hotels, and obviously Niada has a, is a big property with more than 20 rooms. Yes. Um, they will probably be opening soon. We'll find out. Obviously, yeah. we, we, we have. They might, they honestly might wait to open with the border opening. So it might be June 15th. It might be a bit later. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Daniel, that question we'll let you know. Mm -hmm. And we'll quickly get one more in. Uh, again, from Daniel. A visit from the US in late July. Possible or completely unrealistic? <laughs> late July. Late July. I mean, it's really going to depend if the borders open. That'll be yeah. the biggest thing. Um, and then the airlines and then fly. The, well, the, I think the airlines will fly. I'm confident that the um, airlines will you, fly. Do you think that will happen pretty quickly? Yes. Oh, I, mean, airlines, good, okay. I mean, airlines are only going to be flying at 50% occupancy. Yeah. And it's something for them. I mean, it's something mm. for everyone in the tourism industry. So yeah. it's, you know, we're all eager to have tourism back and everybody to have a little bit more normalcy in their yeah, lives. Yeah. Um, not speaking for myself sure. at all. But, um... But I, I mean, as long as the borders are open, I mean, and, and you feel and 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 Dan, Dan, uh, Daniel, feels, yep. Daniel feels safe doing so. Absolutely. I mean, Brilliant. just the question is if the borders are open. So that that's good news. So it's more possible than completely unrealistic. Yeah, I, in my opinion. No, I mean, I, I, I think that's, I think that's very fair. Okay, well, talking of happy endings, the last, uh, the last segment we're going to do yes. is our famous tasty Tico treat. Okay. Now I know you're six months pregnant. Yes. We've already done the first heavy liquor session yeah, I'm glad I missed that with our co-founder, with our founder <laughs> of Cross Rican Vacation yes. with Casey. Last week, Derek yep. did a blind taste test for beers, oh, okay. which he'll hate me for telling. He only got 33% right. One of three. It. Was it like Imperial Pilsen? It was Imperial Pilsen, Bavaria. He got the Bavaria right, the mixed Imperial and Pilsen. He's still suffering a week later. Uh, you mixed it? No, no, no. He, he, he mixed them up. He mixed them up. Oh, yeah, he got them wrong. I mean, they're pretty similar. 
<laughs> right, okay, well, there you go. You'll have to come down and try it. So, guys, this week, Molly and I are going to mm. explain to you what famous Gallo Pinto is. Ooh. Gallo Pinto is the local Tico breakfast, which we'll show you. And you have to have Gallo Pinto with one of two things. So, you have to have salsa lisano. It's like the ketchup of Costa Rica, more or less. That is a very good analogy, mm -hmm. more or less. But you're going to tell us and explain the, the what that tastes like. Okay. And natilla. Natilla. Natilla is sour cream. Now, if you're like me in the UK, sour cream is not that common on many things. Maybe you oh, have really? it with crackers it is and dips. US. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this was an amazing thing. When I first came over here and I found natilla and put it on rice and beans, it is incredible. And this but is from Salcero. It's very different than sour cream in the US because sour cream in the US is sour, uh -huh. whereas this is more like milky, buttery okay. than sour cream. Okay, so that's a really yeah. good point. So, our amazing production team has prepared hot <laughs> gallo pinto. He's been slaving so, away. So, let's have a look at it. Pablo has prepared this specialty. Thank you very much, Pablo. Yeah. So, if you guys want to see, gallo pinto, which literally means painted rooster, is a mix of generally dark purple beans with rice and a bit of cilantro, red onion. So, this has been heated up. Not red so, onion. Uh, yeah, it goes into the camera. Pepper. Around, around yeah. You want to have a look here? So, this is, as you can see, you will find this everywhere. So if you're, uh, if you're, here we go, really close. You see that? <laughs> Rice means I'll make sure it doesn't fall off the plate. This will be in all buffets in any good hotel. Respectable yes. hotel. Respectable. You, have, you have to have uh, rice and beans. Did you cook it? Uh, I didn't cook it. This is pre uh, prepared ahead of time. Um, which would you like to go first with the lasagna or would you like to do the natilla? I like the natilla. Okay, you have to do both though. Okay, fine. This is, this is next up. I'm going to give you, you put a tiny bit of natilla on the corner and I'm going to do this. I do have a personal preference. Some Costa Ricans like to cook pinto with lasagna, so you infuse you don't? the rice. Oh, you I don't, don't cook pinto. I, I like to cook pinto, but okay. I don't put lasagna in it. You don't? No, well, so I'm not the biggest lasagna fan. Okay. It's quite strong, it's got quite a tiny Just vinegary a taste. Bit. It gives a little Just a little bit. Flavor. So, you know, I'm gonna, as I say, it's part of the tasty TK test. I'm gonna put a tiny bit there. Oh, that's oh, oh, yeah. Like, where do you want it over here? Just on the side. Just on the I side. So. And you mix it up together. Okay. So as you can see, it's a, it's a thick, like, brown sauce, kind yeah. of like salsa inglesa, an English sauce in the U.S. We don't Do really have that, but yeah. I mean, it's it's more tart. Yeah, yeah. tart is a good way. Pungent? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the pungent, tarty one. I'm also going to try this pinto from a large supermarket chain here. can't believe you didn't make homemade pinto. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Production value. So yeah, it's kind of tangy. Bit of a yeah. kick. I'm not the biggest fan. I don't know why. I think it's the vinegary. I'm not a big fan of the vinegary. It is very vinegary. But yeah. I, I cook it. Like, I cook the onions. I uh -huh. just started making my own pinto. And the, uh, but... the natilla. You see, you oh, see. The you, natilla, you, uh, you just mix that bad boy in. You, you mix it in. <laughs> and honestly, sour cream. Who would have thought sour cream, rice and beans for breakfast? That's true. When I first moved here, I thought it was the greatest thing ever. It's absolutely delicious. If you're spending a day hiking or you're going on an adventure, mm -hmm. you get so many good carbs. And this keeps you going for hours. Um, Super filling. So, to finish off, your preference, lisano or natilla? Natilla. Okay, so that's two natillas. I'm yeah. in the natilla camp as well. Pablo, as a third voice, do you have a preference? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I do both at the same time. So Pablo is going 50-50. You, you do this uh -huh, and then you mix it? Of, yeah. well, you, mix, you mix natilla you, and lisano. Yeah. It looks a little bit weird. bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, try this I'm gonna do that on too. camera for the first time ever. Um, I'm sure, this is the, the entertainment with, with you guys want. Do you yeah, I, I, I do cook it with lisano. I put in some lisano on it. Uh, well, well, it's okay. at the last stage. Yeah. You know what? It's not bad because it removes some of the tangy taste. Mm. Mm. It softens out that, that vinegar. We have to learn from the Tico. Learn from the Tico. <laughs> How, how's that? Two, two expats living here trying to eat <laughs> lovely traditional Costa Rican breakfast. After how well, many years combined? <laughs> for, exactly. For us, Natia takes it. Guys, when you are down here next time, Make sure to try the breakfast. Do it. into it. It's weird for Americans because it's rice and beans. Exactly. So and, good. you know, do try. You will find Tales Lozano everywhere. Mm -hmm. Classic Costa Rica. Yeah. Again, Natia. <laughs> guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode, Molly. Thank you yes, so much for joining us. You. Questions were awesome. As ever, guys, we will respond to all your questions in the description box below. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to join us next week for a new guest. Um, and, yeah, hopefully we'll be chatting with you soon. Molly, thank okay. you very much. No, thank you. Hasta la próxima, guys. <laughs>